All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Anatomy and Physiology of Speech and Hearing, CDIS 4037, for Hello. fall 2018. This course will be taught in two sections, so that's why you see two people sitting over here. Uh, we are going to divide the anatomy and physiology into a speech section and a hearing section. The speech section will be taught by me. It goes from October 27th, I mean, sorry, August 27th to October 17th. So I'll be teaching the audiology section from October 22nd till the end of the semester. So hopefully this will be kind of easy to focus on one part of the subsystems initially, and then we'll move on um, to the other section. A little bit more information about the speech section. Um, I am Dr. Chaya Guntipalli, and my contact um, email is there. There's a story behind why it's a different email, not my same last name, but we won't go into that now. You'll get to know it as you get to know me. My phone number is on there. My office is in 264 Lamb Hall. I have three teaching assistants. I'm fortunate for that. Um, they are all first-year graduate students, so they're learning the process um, with me um, this semester. So Haley, Natalie, and Olivia, their emails are there. You can also contact them um, with any questions you might have. So my name is Saravanan Elangovan. I'm with the audiology program over here. You've got my contact information on the slide. Um, I'm located actually in 271 Lamb Hall. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and my teaching assistant is going to be Matt Sabo. So he's a, he's a second year uh, audiology doctorate student. Uh, he's going to be helping with the discussion boards and uh, grading and answer a few of the questions of working along with me. All right. So our office hours are going to be common. So I do have the number right here. That's I didn't right. fix it in the previous slide. So our on-campus uh, office hours are going to be Tuesday mornings between 9.30 and 10.30. And I know a lot of you will be taking other courses. You may not be able to make that time. But we also have it by appointment. So if you cannot make it into our office hours, please make sure you shoot us an email. And we will try to accommodate you as much as we can with your schedules that you have. We're going to be talking about it more later on, but we do have a discussion board and we'd like for you to be actively engaged in them. And that would be a good forum for you to ask your questions or somebody might have already asked that question to learn from the responses you get from that question. Lamb Hall, you might want to look at the campus map to figure out where the Lamb Hall is. Uh, and um, uh, and uh, yeah, you'll, you'll find out where we are. <laughs> And our study sessions, so since this is an online course, we'd like to, and anatomy and physiology is a tough subject to grasp, a tough concept to grasp, we would like to organize at least two study sessions on campus. Now, I know some of you that are taking this course may not even be in the area of Johnson City or close by, and we will try to record these sessions for you and post it um, for everybody to view. Um, but we'll try to at least organize two sessions per section. So I'll have two study sessions and Dr. Elangovan will have two study sections. I will, I like to usually post some days and times on the discussion board once you get kind of started. And then we'll take a poll of students um, availability and try to accommodate the most number of students on a certain day and time to organize the study sessions. Do you have anything to add? Good. Well, the, uh, this is the first time I'm going to be teaching or coordinating this course. So many of the lectures that you'll find actually uh, might be those that were uh, by Dr. Mark Fagelson, who was, who was directing this course for the past three years. Um, so if you see that the, 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 the person and the accent is not jamming, it's because of that. <laughs> All right, we have our required text here. Um, you can also get the fifth edition if you want, the fourth or the fifth edition. Um, our notes are from a multitude of resources. Um, and so even if you don't buy this textbook, you can kind of rent it or get it from the library to just go over information. Especially, I think I would say it's important to go over the labeling and information like that um, with, these, with this textbook. I'm not going to go over all of the details of the course objectives. You can find this on your syllabus, but this is for you to, something to know that you're going to be able to get the um, information on the anatomy and physiology of the speech systems, which is respiration, phonation, articulation, and then, of course, the hearing system, and then the neuroanatomical structures associated with normal speech and hearing. Again, this is a normal course. We will kind of talk briefly about examples of abnormal uh, pathologies that go with this, but it's, it's a normal um, anatomy and physiology um, course. So for those who are following the sequence in our minor, CDI is minor, 
the, the information that you'll be learning from this course is going to be the kind of the foundation uh, for the clinical aspects that we're going to be talking about in next semester. In which I think Dr. E is going to teach one of your courses. You'll see me quite a bit. You, I'm going to teach this, then I'm going to do the speech and hearing sciences one um, in the second half of the semester, and then clinical process um, in spring as well. So just to give you an idea, our course assignments are basically going to be quizzes, uh, a midterm, and a final exam. And they're kind of split between the two sections evenly. So each section will have five quizzes, which means you have a quiz pretty much every week. Um, and then you have a midterm, and then you have a cumulative final exam for each um, section. And our dates are posted on your um, syllabus, and we will pull up the syllabus at the end of this PowerPoint to kind of give you an idea of what to look for. Um, if you talk about the quizzes, there are total, as I said, 10 quizzes. Each quiz is 10 points each to a to for a total of 100 points. Um, the way the quiz is set up is it will open on a Wednesday evening. I think for both courses, we've set it up in a way that it opens on Wednesday evening, which will give you time to finish your watching your two lectures for that week. It'll open Wednesday evening. It'll co close on Thursday evening by 5 p.m. Eastern time. Now, I want you to pay attention to Eastern time because some of you may be on a different time zone, but it's set to Eastern time. Your quizzes and your exams will be timed. Your quizzes are 10 to 15 minutes each, but for each quiz, we will let you know what the time limit is for that quiz. So make sure you complete the quiz within the specified time limit. Each question, I mean, each quiz can vary from three to 10 questions. As I said, five quizzes for our speech section and five quizzes for hearing section. We also have a practice quiz. If this is the first time you're taking an online course, we do have a practice quiz to give you an idea of what it is to go on to Detool. And we're going to pull up Detool and show you what it looks like. You're going to go on to Detool. You're going to go under the section and take the practice quiz and try to complete the practice quiz by 5 p.m. on Wednesday evening. Now, this is not mandatory. You don't have to do a practice quiz. It's not going to be graded, but it gives you an idea of what it looks like to take a quiz with our course. So when you do, do take the quiz, there's going to be a timer on it, giving you a countdown, and it will be it will look like one of the many standardized tests that you've been acquainted with. Um, and uh, we uh, do hope the, to put those dates for the quiz as a reminder on your calendar, which is going to be on one the right half of your screen, and, and when we go to D2L. Well. And again, for each. Um section there is a midterm 100 points each we will show you what where to look for the exam date again it's to submit the exam by 5 p.m for the midterm and final exam we give you a 48 hour window so you will start i think it's usually posted on a wednesday and you have to friday to take the exam but once you this is the key thing with your exam is once you're in the exam you got to finish it within that time frame you don't have 48 hours to go in and come back, go in and come back. It is a one-time shot, so when you do decide to take it, make sure you have sufficient time to take the exam. If it's an hour and a half, make sure you have an hour and a half to finish the exam. Okay. Um, your final exam is a cumulative exam for each section. So for speech, it will be a cumulative, which is due on October 12th. Um, so again, that means it opens on the 10th and it closes on the 12th. For the hearing, it opens on the 5th and closes on the 7th. Um, these are again timed as well. Okay. Now, um, we all know this is an online exam, right? There will be internet glitches sometimes. So we give you certain tips to follow as you go through the process. We highly recommend you take your exam where there's good, reliable internet. If you can be on campus, take it on the campus computer. If you're at home, try to connect it to an ethernet plug instead of doing a Wi-Fi because sometimes our Wi-Fi wi connections can be iffy. If you do lose your internet briefly, most of the times you can go back in and complete the exam. You will have ability to go back in and complete the exam. If you cannot, you know, panic sets in first. I don't want you to panic. Send us an email, send us, you know, try to call us on our office phone. Email is the best way to get to us. Send us an email and we will try to get back to you as quickly as possible. Now, I will give you a heads up. On Thursday, I'm in clinic all day. So if you're taking an exam and I don't respond to you within two hours, that means I'm in clinic. I will get back to you as soon as possible. Okay, within 24 hours, we can come up with a reasonable plan of action. And same, likewise. All right, so as Dr. Ilang Owen was talking about the discussion board, we might have discussion forum for some modules where we ask you to chime in on a certain discussion topic. For, so your discussion board will be organized based on your forum as in your um, content. So it's going to be a mimic of what is on your table of contents in your discussion board. 
We prefer that you use your discussion board to ask any questions related to the topic that you have because as Dr. E was saying, it gives an opportunity for all students to view our responses. Because if you shoot an email, we have about 40 students in class, that information or that question might be the same question another student has, and it's easy to share that information on the discussion board. So any questions related to um, the topic of interest, um, please use the discussion board to ask those um, questions. Okay. Now, this is online, so this is going to be very important for you to know about how to um, use emails for our courses. Always include a subject line. I teach two online courses. We get all, a lot of graduate students emailing, so we would like to see CDIS 4037 in your subject line. So that gives us a cue who's contacting us, okay? Always address email to the instructor, which means you will say Dr. N Dr. Guntapali or Dr. Ilangovin, and sign your name because right now all your emails are ZKW or ELG. We don't know by that who the person is, you know, and there could be lots of uh, Marias or, you know, Daniels in your class. So make sure you sign your first and last name so we know who the email is coming from. Use email to only convey any personal emergencies or any personal questions regarding grades. Or if you missed a quiz, you're not feeling well, you can't take an exam, something happened. Use email for personal emergencies. And as we discussed earlier, for any questions related to the topic or the content, please try to use the discussion board. Now, we all get frustrated during this process. Online process can be frustrating. We will miss some deadlines initially when you start. We're going to, that's what we're going to try to associate with the calendar. But without facial expressions, some comments that you may make with that expresses your frustration can come out in the wrong way. So be very careful when you word your email. Okay. And I'm 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 not I'm I'm not speaking this for myself and not Dr. Um, Ilangovan. You will not receive an email response if the content of the email is inappropriate or disrespectful, or if the questions have already been addressed on the discussion board. So this is your responsibility. We're already making you professionals, right? We're in, making you into the professional world. That we want you to be able to be um, appropriate and respectful, asking questions, and kind of be on top of things, going through the discussion board, making sure, hey, I'm asking this question. Has this question? already been um, because it's going to be per forum so you can just quickly look through the forum and ensure that those questions have been addressed okay usually it's a pretty good spot to start first before you shoot an email um, to your professor and be mindful of others also when you're commenting to any of your classmates uh, about yeah, being respectful um, <laughs> I won't go through this again. You can try. This is something that we have. Do not make insulting or inflammatory statements to other members of the discussion group because somebody might ask a question and that might be a simple question to you, but that is a concerning question to them. So just be always careful and respond in a very thoughtful manner and be positive and constructive. So the discussion board, there is an option where turning off uh, uh, the previous responses or uh, answers. See if you can... Um, turn that off. If not, it'll be just long threads with the that series of responses from the previous uh, comment. That's a good suggestion. And that'll be something that'll be helpful, I think, when I do my 4017 course, because you have to answer a lot of questions That's there. Good. That's good. Okay, this is very important for you to pay attention to. This is called the Syllabus Review Confirmation. This document will be found under the Syllabus module, and I'll pull up and show it to you in just a minute on D2L. Check the box and type your name in the space provided and try to submit this document by 5 p.m. on August 31st in the Dropbox. The reason we're do doing this is we are required to report attendance, which means that by this date, if you have not confirm that you're attending this course, when we have to report our um, attendance, we might report you absent. And you know what the consequences are in terms of your financial consequences. So please be aware that you have signed up for this course. Make sure that you go in, complete the um, um, confirmation form, and upload it into Dropbox. Okay, so now let's go to our syllabus outline real quick. I'm going to switch gears here. Remember we talked about, so everything that we have um, on is right here on your um, syllabus, but we quickly wanted to kind of pull up this page and show it to you. If you notice, this is our course schedule and summary. We have our date, and you can see here, practice quiz is posted by 5 p.m. Eastern time, which means it gets posted on the 27th, 
and it's due on the 29th, okay? So I want you to pay attention to this section where the assessment is. And as Dr. E was saying, we're going to try to put this on your calendar so there is an automatic reminder for you. But also, once you get your syllabus, write this down wherever your organizer is. If it's your phone, if it's a separate notebook that you have like an organizer, just write down your dates as a second reminder for it to happen. So um, if you see here, speech midterm is posted on the, sept on the 26th of September and it's due on the 28th of September. As I said, there's a 48-hour period for um, midterms and final exam. Do you have anything to um, comment? No, we are, as I said, we're going to try to post it on the calendar that we'll show you shortly. Keep, uh, yeah, keep monitoring that. Okay. So then we're going to pull up our... Um, actually, let me pause here for a second. I want you to ensure that every time... Um, I got feedback from one of my GAs who took my course that she'd like the lectures to be posted the Friday before the start so if you wanted to prepare for quiz so the module for each so on if of course this you can only see for the first week on the first day of classes but for this week are your your um, lectures will be posted the Friday before so you have the weekend to look through if you wanted to look at lectures and be prepared for your quiz okay so that was something that we took um, as a feedback from previous students Okay, so right now, this is how I'm going to go to Course Home. When you open your thing, this is how it looks. This is your new, um, Course Home. And as Dr. E was mentioning, right here is your calendar. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, when you go to your Course Home, you will have a calendar. And I think you can subscribe. You can go down, and it shows you the different right. uh, oh, yeah. upcoming events over here. So you, you can see this already been set up, when to open. So each of the lectures are going to open on that certain um, day. Okay. And so we'll make arrangements for the quiz Quizzes also, to show. the midterms to show up as, a, uh, as an upcoming event or deadline. Yeah. So that, that's where you need to look for that. And then when you go to your content, um, so if you look, the table of contents is right here. And if I go in and click here, it's introduction to A&P, your syllabus, your syllabus materials. Now, I haven't up um, updated the syllabus here. Um, I will be updating our syllabus here for this year, but this is just how it's going to look. Um, we will have your video that you're, we're recording now posted here, and then um, your syllabus materials. And then if I go click on this section, the module is organized in a way to give you the lecture materials, so you'll have a PowerPoint and a PDF. And then you will also have, um, here, let me pull this up. You will also have lecture media files. Why can't I find my media files? Hang on. This is a new system, so there we go. So we have lecture materials right here, and then we have, hmm. That is a link, though. That is this a, is the link, yeah, right? Link, yeah. Okay, so this is going to be organized in a different way. I'll tell you right now. Right now, it's on lecture materials, but you'll have lecture materials and lecture media files, okay? So whereas the media files is where you can watch me um, presenting your, the topic, and then the lecture material will tell you which document to follow as it goes on. Okay, and then if you go here, um, this is where our discussions are. So if you can see, we have just started to create the modules. Um, you can look and you can start, you can click this, and it'll open on a certain day. You can create a new thread, start a new thread for each module. So as you can see, there are um, forums for each of the topics that is in your content. Anything else? Uh, but the evaluation, uh, this is where you'd find your, your quizzes. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the grades, of course, you'll find at the bottom as you can monitor them. And then the Dropbox will create a Dropbox for you to put in your um, confirmation, syllabus confirmation document. And if there's anything else that we require you to put in a Dropbox, we will create Dropbox for that. We're hoping within a week's time we'll have the, the grade for the preceding quiz. Yes. Yeah. So if you finish by Thursday, by the next week, we should have everything the graded. Grade for the previous one. Okay. 
Uh, we look forward to having you in class this year. Of course, it's online, not in class. But um, I look forward to interacting with you more online. And as I said, you are more than welcome to come into my office at any time. Shoot me an email for appointments, but the office hours are Tuesday morning. And hopefully we will have a great time doing anatomy and physiology for 2018. Welcome.